Elon Musk updates us on a potential orbital launch timeline for Starship. NASA gets audited. Russia makes a mess. Starlink's flock gets bigger. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Our sponsor for today's video is My Patriot Supply. Whether or not you've been paying attention to current events this year, chances are you probably heard of the supply chain shortages going on. If you're the one in the household that does the shopping, you've seen it firsthand with the empty shelves and increase in food prices thanks to inflation. Gas prices too, and same with cars and houses. They're building back better, guys. Like I've been saying since the spring, and like many experts are saying now, it's not gonna get any better anytime soon especially not under this administration. So for you and your family's sake, consider purchasing an emergency food supply kit from My Patriot Supply. As prices at the local grocery store continue to climb, I consider it as an investment for a little peace of mind. Their kits contain a wide variety of delicious foods that provide over 2,000 calories per day. And right now you can save $100 off each 30 month emergency food kit you purchase. Just go to preparewithspace.com. There's a link in the description below. That's preparewithspace.com. Oh, and a lot of you ask, yes, they do ship to Canada. All right, as we went over last Friday, SpaceX conducted the record-breaking static fire of Starship 20 using all six Raptor engines. Upon conclusion, RGV aerial photography provided us with a before and after comparison of heat shield tile displacement. Not bad at all. I'm actually quite impressed by the rapid progress we've been seeing on that front. On Monday night, the ship tested out some flat movement, and it's possible the major test milestones for 20 have been reached and SpaceX could be moving on to other vessels before the big flight to orbit. Booster 4 will need to conduct its own tests, which will in part include lighting up its 29 Raptor engines. It looks like all of them have been installed. Road closures for the week have been canceled. Next weeks are still in play at this time though. We could see some booster test tank action soon. The hefty can of steel was recently moved to the launch site for such activities. SpaceX is always looking to improve what they're building. The same goes with the Raptors themselves. Elon twatting the new Raptor 2 design they're currently testing has significant improvements in every way. But still, a complete design overhaul is necessary for the engine that can actually make life multiplanetary. It won't be called Raptor. On Wednesday evening, Elon and his little monkey participated in a virtual interview with the Space Studies Board and Board on Physics and Astronomy to speak about the Starship program. During the live stream, he informed us of the current timeline for this upcoming orbital flight. So we've completed the, the first orbital booster uh, and first orbital ship um, and will be complete with the uh, launch pad and launch tower uh, later this month. And then we'll do a bunch of tests in, in December and hopefully launch in, in January. Obviously, Elon has adjusted his orbital timeline to include the FAA's recent announcement that the government agency should have a decision on the Boca Chica environmental assessment on December 31st. Hopefully, they'll receive a finding of no significant impact. Otherwise, a new EIS will need to be conducted which will ground any local super heavy launches for years, most likely. Limiting factor for first launch is regulatory approval. Therefore, fundamental issue is solving engine production. Prototypes are easy, production is hard. Stay positive, people. Like Elon, he's not expecting a successful mission at all with this upcoming launch, but is expecting to learn a lot. That is the SpaceX way. There's a lot of risk associated with this first launch, so I would not say that uh, it is likely to be success, uh, successful, but I think we'll, we'll make a lot of progress. Um, and then we've also built a, a factory for making a lot of these vehicles. So this is not a case of just, just one or two. Um, we're aiming to make um, a great many. Um, ultimately, I think if, in order for life to become multi-planetary, uh, we'll need uh, maybe a thousand ships or something like that. The Office of the Inspector General released their audit report for NASA and found that the SLS won't cost $2 billion per launch after all, but more than double that at $4.1 billion totaling $93 billion all in from 2012 to 2025. Starship is mentioned several times in the report, since NASA plans on using it to land humans on the moon, and it reads like the government may be having buyer's remorse, or at least second thoughts, about starting down the SLS route. Quote, although Congress mandated that NASA build the SLS and Orion capsule for its space exploration goals in 2010, the agency may soon have more affordable commercial options to carry humans to the moon and beyond. For the first few manned Artemis missions, Starship will dock with the Orion capsule directly in lunar orbit after refueling with the SpaceX Depot spacecraft in Earth orbit. Then the HLS Starship will take two of the four astronauts down to the lunar surface for up to a week before bringing them back to Orion, which will take them back to Earth. SpaceX plans on keeping lunar Starship in space as a ferry. Eventually, NASA and international partners want to build and utilize a lunar space station called the Gateway. 
The question is, will it really be needed if Starship alone can build and maintain a colony on the moon? My prediction is, before the decade is out, SLS will retire after a couple flights and the gateway, while neat and somewhat beneficial, will begin construction despite everyone asking why, since, you know, Starship will have already put a base on the moon. All of this, of course, granting that the world doesn't descend into chaos first. Speaking of which, Russia ain't feeling threatened by this administration, like at all, or any other world leader currently holding office. This week, they contributed more destructive debris clouds to Earth orbit by saying, f*** it, let's blow up one of our defunct satellites at an altitude similar to that of the space station, the test of a direct ascent anti-satellite missile. Namaste, comrades. Ah, mother line! This deliberate action puts both human lives and artificial satellites in jeopardy and will take years for the debris to deorbit. Which is a lovely little segue into our next segment, Starlink. On Saturday, SpaceX launched their first East Coast four, Starlink mission in nearly three, half a year. Two, kind of looks like Vandenberg one. though, don't it? Lift off. Mmm, fog licking. The reused Falcon 9 placed 53 version 1.5 sats in orbit, which are equipped with the LaserLink technology to help reduce latency and provide coverage where it otherwise wouldn't be expected, like on a sinking boat in the middle of the ocean, putting the total tally close to 2,000 Starlink sats launched. The booster for this mission made a four-point landing on the drone ship, just read the instructions. SpaceX's next mission is DART, NASA and the world's first planetary defense test mission to boop an asteroid, which is expected to launch upon a Falcon 9 on November 24th. And now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. Rocket Lab launched their latest Electron mission to orbit on Wednesday, carrying two Black Sky second generation imaging satellites to an altitude of 430 clicks. Both currently operating as they should, so we can all rest comfortably knowing the governments of the world, as well as corporations with an urge to creep, can watch us sunbathe topless in our backyards. This was the third mission to incorporate Schutz Bra for a booster recovery. This time a heli was used to observe the first stage successfully splashed down under canopy. Next year, Rocket Lab will attempt to snatch it out of the air via skyhook. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for the views. I appreciate those of you who fingered this video, as well as those of you who are subscribed. But most of all, those of you supporting these episodes by using one of the links in the description below. Get yourself, for your dog, an eccentric shirt, mug, or patch in time for Christmas. Another good gift idea is the card game Starship Shuffle, made in America, and featuring my face. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. <laughs>